Hi everybody, it's Shirley Smith with Caldwell Banker West. And I'm here cruising around IB today again. And I just wanna say, I love, my mission here is to bring the community together and let people know about our wonderful small businesses. I love supporting small business. I love the entrepreneurial spirit of uh, the small business person. And I've got somebody here, Lisa. Um, and he, Capano. Capano. Lisa Capano. And she has Lisa Capano, fine art, restoration and conservation business. And boy, am I learning a lot. So Lisa, <laughs> you didn't only, you know, shut down your business in COVID, you actually moved here to Imperial Beach. I did. Five weeks ago. Tell yes, us about my that. husband and I have relocated from Colorado. We lived outside of Boulder, between Boulder and Denver. And I have been a Capano Fine Art Restoration and Conservation private practice business person since I was 21, 22 years old, and I'm 50, almost 57. And we came here, mom and dad need some help, and it's time for us to be here in G-Darn. It's, it's tough because now, you know, it's gonna start snowing in Colorado. <laughs> Gee! <laughs> you are right here, right here on the bicycle path. In exactly, exactly. So it was, it was very tough. Yes. And it's a beautiful home studio. You yes, know. exactly. I've always worked at home. Yeah. Always. Private practice, and I work for cities, uh, the state of Colorado, um, hopefully for the state of California, museums, universities, and private people. Oh, this yeah. is fantastic. So tell us, what does an art restoration and conservationalist do, and how might we use your services? Okay, so uh, I am a painting conservator. And painting conservation is a specialization in the whole field of art conservation. Um, we use the word restoration, conservation. Restoration can be applied to restoring damages that have happened. Conserving is keeping it conserved so it will not get worse. Um, here in the States, they use the term conservation more. In Italy, where I studied and did my master's program and lived for 15 years, we use restauro, which is from restoration. Wow. And even in Spanish, restauración. So that is where restoration and conservation, it's really just in the word, but here we are referred to as conservation oh yeah or conservators so and i started my i was a graphic art major in san jose state because that's where i'm from and i went to italy my junior year and fell in love with italy finished up my studies at san jose state and did a master's degree in fine art restoration conservation in florence italy and then lived oh, there for 15 years florence. so and milan that's i lived in yeah. milan as well so i brought my business back to the states in year 2000 and set up shop there in colorado and now my husband and i are here and I'm sitting at my shop here as well. So, oh, fantastic. And I restore painted. I do painted surfaces so they can be murals, frescoes, they can be wood, paintings on wood, paintings on canvas. These are called easel paintings and everything around here, uh, you can work with it on an easel. When I go on site, I can get scaffolding and go up or work with another company that does the same thing. Yes. So whether I'm climbing up scaffolding like a little monkey and restoring murals or frescoes, or whether I'm in the studio working on easel painting, it's all about restoring and conserving artwork. And you're new here, starting I, over at 56 in a new yes, city. Yes, exactly, new city. Uh, new, even though you're not starting over, you're very well seasoned in your profession. What what do you think with COVID? What's kind of the so well? You said COVID you've been busy. Is, yes, I've been busy ever since last March, February, March when COVID actually hit the scene. Because what I do is so specialized that it really didn't matter. People bring me paintings, companies, universities, libraries, anything. City people have paintings around either that they've inherited or bought, and they find me and say. I've been looking at this, it's up on the wall, and I need to get it taken care of. It could be a simple cleaning, it could have rips and tears, like some of these oh, pieces geez. have yeah. yellow coats of old varnish, rips and tears in the canvas. Um, and they just are looking, I think, in this COVID time period, everybody's home. So you're looking at the artwork mm -hmm. on your walls and thinking, gosh, I got this from grandmother or I got this from my parents, and they were heavy smokers. And, oh. you know, there's a lot of tobacco that accumulates on the surface and old yellow varnish. And so finally people are taking care of things because they have to look at it. And they're, restoring and they're getting things restored and conserved. So well, I've been busy. I'm, I'm yeah. swamped. Yes. We're, we're, it's like that in real estate. You know, because of COVID, people are home and they're either 
renovating their homes, painting, working out in their gardens, or going, you know, this house isn't the right fit anymore. I need something smaller. I need something bigger. We're downsizing. We're upsizing. Yeah. It's because people are busy. People are out. And I guess that extends to your art. <laughs> it does. Your wonderful artwork, yeah. and particularly if it's, it's art that you've invested in or families passed down. Yeah. So are you going to do a demonstration? I am going to do a demonstration. demonstration. So show us how she restored. Right so here. here. So these are all, all that's surrounding me that you see are oil paintings. Oil on canvas, oil on masonite, on wood board. They are all in different states of damages. And you have, you see, see some here, there's rips and tears in the canvas. You see the cleaning line where I've done some cleaning and the other part's still dirty. This is also the same case. What would this have been? Would this have been varnish or smoke tobacco? Oh, so the yellow coat of varnish, the yellow is the, coat, the old coat of varnish because they used to make varnishes with a lot of resins and it was unpure. And nowadays we're making a lot of things with, um, acroloids and different kinds of bases that are easily removable and do not darken with time. And old yellow varnish is a, something from the past. So what I'm going to be doing here is taking off surface dirt and grime and some yellow varnish. So I will have the painting up on the easel and then I will start testing my solvents to find out what is only going to remove surface dirt and grime you never want to remove the paint because that's a bad thing oh that's such Look tedious, at this. tedious it is and this is why i tell people you know thing. you're not going to get your car or your painting back like a, a mechanic always says it's going to take time so you're not going to get your painting back in like a day or two it's probably going to live with me and get better for you know a month to two months to three months depending on what kind of damages have been done and what needs to get done. So see, you are not seeing any paint coming off. You're just seeing surface dirt, grime, oh my gosh, and extraordinary. old yellowed varnish. And I have to get into the nooks and crannies and you really have to know your chemistry. This is not something that anybody can do. You need to know chemistry. You need to know your solvents and also what's on the top of your paintings and how old the paint is also because as oil paints get older, they harden and chemistry hardens things. So you need to know what to put together so you just get dirt grime and old discolored varnish now, off. What do you do with something like this? Okay. This is a rip, look at this. So Come on. That's this ribbon. is ripped. So here's and they an example. Want this restored. So this is a painting that had rips and tears in the canvas and some punctures, okay? okay. What needs to be done, it needs to be flattened out with the humidity treatment, which gets rid of all the ripples and the buckles in the canvas. And then patches are applied. In this case, I had to do double patches. So I have a, a singular patch going along the tear line, and then I have a larger patch going over. And there's one here where the puncture was. So in an ideal world, this painting would be patched like it is and taken off of its stretcher and then relined and relining means a re-adhering a new piece of canvas to the back of the original canvas okay. giving it a stabilization so it's nice and flat and it holds together because this is like scar tissue so it's what, like when you what happens on the front, on the front then the what do, is this so this like is it? gesso no this is gesso and we call it spackle, but it's just so that we actually, we conservators actually make okay. with calcium carbonate and uh, rabbit skin glue. And it gets put into all the missing areas. So where you have raw canvas and where you see raw canvas, then the gesso gets put in. And then you paint on top of that because canvases are primed. You know, sometimes you'll see the white primer so on you the would edges. Touch up. You and then touch we up. go in and we touch up on top of this. We conservators then go and color match wow. to touch up. So let me take this down. And what kind of people would do something like this? Is it obviously valuable art or sentimental in the family? And it, everything and above. So it's sentimental. A lot of people come to me and say, I, I got this from grandmother and it's no big Whoop. You know, it's not a Charles Partridge Adams. It's not a Stein girl. You know, it's it's just sentimental, but to them it's important. So, and I don't base my prices on our or what. I base it on what the painting needs. 
the materials that I'm going to be using, the time invested in it, sure. But, um, you know, there, there's different prices and people who have are good artwork and very famous ones that I've worked on, um, it doesn't matter to me if it's a Picasso yes. or if it's just a somebody, somebody. It, yeah. it is a painting that needs attention. It's an art. It's, it's an art. art. And I, it gets my full 110%. It's funny. I sometimes get clients who, well, I have a Monet and I'm very, and I'm like, I get it. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's a big named artist. And I get it. And you're, you know, of course you're being careful about it, but it will get 110% care, whether it's a Monet or whether it's just so-and-so and there's no name attached to it. It's always going to get 110%. Well, I tell yeah. you, you it's just such a treasure. You're coming here. And so she paints a lot of this kind of rock or um, Picasso-like kind of look. It looks like a so Picasso. So what happened here was that the paint got chipped off. It was in somebody's attic and it just all the water, you know, seeped into mm -hmm. the masonite and the masonite expanded and the paint popped off. So I had to re-glue and stabilize the areas that were lifting and popping off. And in fact, you can, up close, you can see the crackles still and you can feel how different it is. But now it's stable, see? Nothing's gonna chip off. And then I put in the gesso fill. I've got some more to do. And then I start doing the end painting to color match. So, yeah. So this is also interesting. This one is interesting. So this was in a fire. This is what fire does. So this is soot, okay? This is, I use this as a piece when I go and I talk to people. Fire really bad. <laughs> fire really bad because not only does it produce soot that is acid and acrid and eats away, but it also will, the heat will bubble up the paint because it's oil paint, there's oil. Oil. And so all of these areas that you see here are where paint used to be and has popped off. See, look at, because what has happened is that it's blistered and popped off. Mm -hmm. And then I've cleaned here. You can see my cleaning line. I can't get it any cleaner because it's stained now with the soot. Mm. So it will always be dark like this. It will never be clean. This part was underneath the frame. You can see how lighter it was actually once upon a time because the frame protected that part from the heat. There's a Coca-Cola sign in here. This is probably some street scene in New York or the Bronx or Chicago or something, you know, with, he has the little donkey and the people, here's a lady with her, ba her, her pail and they're doing the laundry and there's a kid playing right there. And you're gonna be able and, to restore this. Well, I have to clean it to as far as it can be cleaned. And then I have to put the gesso fill in the areas and touch it up. So yeah, but this oh. is, and water damage and everything like that. This I mean, is so fascinating. It is, it really is. And here you have the oil on canvas, right? On the stretcher. And I'm putting it under here because this oh, is a good a line. Chair in so this is raw canvas where paint has chipped away. So this is oil painting and this is the canvas. It has the primer, which is that white primer that they put on all canvases to seal it, that is chipped away with the paint, but it also has a hole and rips and tears. See, you can see through, there's another tear here. So, what this painting, I've done cleaning, see the yellow varnish and see the cleaned area? Mm -hmm. Look how, how it's going to be. I mean, look at her colors. Look at the pinks in her dress. She's called the letter writer, and he's obviously a farmer or somebody who doesn't know how to read or write. Dictating a, letter. dictating a letter. She's writing, then she has the pages up drying, and she, she has her pearls on, and her gold earrings, her hoops. But yeah, so it, the paintings tell a story, of course. So this needs cleanings, it needs stabilization, it needs patching, it needs gesso fills, it needs in painting, and then a final coat of protective varnish. Fabulous. Yeah. So here we've got another pearl right here in Imperial Beach with all of your talent and your wisdom and coming here. And I can imagine our followers here in Coronado and Imperial Beach and people having that piece of art. Yeah, really. It doesn't matter what it's a, if it's painted surfaces. So paintings on canvas, on board, on wood. So mm -hmm. I don't do paper conservation. You have to look for a paper conservator or glass. You do a glass conservator or if it's textile or weaving, you have to look for those kinds. Of, I have a list of referrals yeah. and uh, 
How can people get a hold of you? They can Google me. Yay, okay. do the Google. So spell it. We'll put it's www.capanorestoration.com. So it's C-A-P-A-N-O restoration.com. Uh, my phone number is 720, which is a Colorado area code, I know, but it's 720-938-3825. And I'm on Google. I mean, really, you just couldn't look for San Diego art restoration or painting conservation, and I will pop up. Well, so, thank you. Thank you. Thank this you is, for, it's very amazing. I do career day talks. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be doing one for my high school in Willow Glen um, in February over Zoom because that's what we're doing now. So, so if anybody wants to, if anybody book is in a work, talk or exactly, in the one of the, or the, I've, I've done so many talks. Cornell the Elks library, Club, yes. the Knights of Mall, anything that you can think of. Church groups that they need a and guest speaker. Demonstrations. And I do demonstrations. I bring my things with me and I show people oh, and I amazing. educate them about painting conservation. That's great. Don't oh, throw something are, away. You are, Get you are truly a pro. Thank you. I thank you so being. much, Shirley. Really. Thank this you. Is I wonderful. love meeting you and making a new friend. Yeah. So cruise around uh, IB today with Lisa Capano and uh, her beautiful art restoration business. Give her a call. See you next time. Bye.